Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ali. I'm a final year medical student at Cambridge University. And in this video, I'm going to be briefly explaining how the UK medical training system works beyond medical school. And at the end of the video, I'll give you a quick update as to where I'm currently fitting into this grand scheme of things. As usual, everything's timestamped down below in the description, so you can skip ahead to the right bits if you feel like it. But yeah, let's jump into it. We're going to be talking about how UK medical training works. So as you might know, uh, medical school lasts five years in the UK. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. And some medical schools require you to do an intercalated degree, like Cambridge, and in some medical schools it's optional. So in those places, uh, medical school lasts six years. You get into medical school at roughly the age of 18 and you leave at roughly the age of 24, give or take a few years. Let's say if you haven't done an intercalated degree or you took a gap year or you're a graduate student, etc., etc. And then beyond medical school, you join the foundation program and every single medical graduate does the foundation program and the foundation program lasts two years. So those are FY1 and FY2. And in each of those two years, you usually have three different rotations of four months each. And these rotations might be, for example, general surgery, general medicine, psychiatry, and then in FY2 you might have ONG as number four, you might have, I don't know, cardiology as number five, and respiratory as number six, you know, that sort of thing. And there's like loads of different combinations. So after your two years of the foundation program, that's when you make the choice. I'm simplifying a little bit, but I'll give you more caveats as we go along in the video. The choice is basically between core medical training and core surgical training, CMT and CST. And core medical training and core surgical training last two years and you choose one or the other. Now, after doing two years of core medical training, let's say you want to become a cardiologist because cardiology is a medical specialty. You would apply for ST3 cardiology, so specialist training three in cardiology. But let's say you want to become a plastic surgeon. Plastic surgery is obviously a surgical specialty. So after your two years of core surgical training, you would then apply to SD3 in plastics, specialist training three in plastics, and it's a three because you've done two years of surgery training already. So this is your third year of surgical training. And most specialties go up to ST8. So year three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, that's like six years worth. And after ST8, that is when you become a consultant, effectively. So you leave medical school around the age of 24. Uh, you make the choice at around, around the age of 26. Your core medical training and core surgical training last two years. So that takes you up to age 28. And then from ST3 to ST8 is six years. So that takes you roughly about to age 34 to 35, which is pretty much the earliest time you can be a consultant in the UK. So that's how it works for the basic core medical and core surgical specialties. But what if you want to become a GP or what if you want to become a psychiatrist? That's when we talk about run-through specialties. So with run-through specialties, everyone still does medical school. Everyone still does FY1 and FY2. It's just that for run-through specialties, you have a few more options when it comes to the choice. As we discussed, you can either go down the CMT or the CST, core medical training or core surgical training route, or instead you can go for a run-through specialty, which starts off as ST1, so specialty training one. And you go from ST1 to ST8 usually, but you know, some are, some are, some are a bit shorter. I can't remember which ones. Let's say you want to become a GP. GP is one of the shorter ones. You join ST1 and then you have ST2 and then you have ST3 and then you're a fully fledged GP pretty much. So it's taken you three years beyond the choice. So three years after foundation years to become a GP. Therefore, in total, it takes you five years after graduating medical school, roughly about the age of 29, 30, to become a fully fledged GP. Now, let's say you don't want to become a GP and you don't want to become a hospital medic or a hospital surgeon. Let's say you want to do obstetrics and gynecology, which is the specialty that I'm currently interested in. So you do your FY1 and your FY2, but then when you make the choice, you can apply to ST1 in obs and gynae. And obs and gynae goes all the way up to ST7. And then after SD7, you can become a consultant. So you're effectively missing out on the core medical training or the core surgical because you're instead focusing on the specialty from the moment you finish foundation years. So SD1 through to SD7. And there are loads of other run-through specialties like psychiatry, pediatrics, uh, neurosurgery, a few others. Ophthalmology, I think, and I'll put a link to the BMA's uh, medical training pathway in the description below if you're interested. But to be honest, this, this should hopefully give you a fairly broad overview as to where you go after medical school. So two years of foundation training, probably two years of core training, like core medical or core surgical, and then probably five or so years, five or six years of specialty training. Otherwise, you might do a run-through program. In general, the earliest you can become a consultant in a you know, medical or surgical specialty is about the age of 34, 35-ish. Um, and if you want to go down the GP route, it takes five years from medical school, so you're about the age of 29, 30 by the time you become a fully-fledged GP. Okay, so that was a rough overview. Let's now talk about the foundation program, because that's the thing that happens immediately after medical school, and that's the thing that I'm part of at the moment. Basically, for the foundation program, the whole of the UK, uh, that's Scotland, uh, that's Wales, and that's England, uh, the whole of the UK is split up into various different regions. Uh, so all of Scotland is pretty much one region. La -la -la -la. Uh, all of Wales is pretty much one region, and England is split up into like loads of different ones. I'll put the number over here once I once I fact check myself. So for the foundation program, you apply to a particular region, 
and the idea is that you rank them all in order of preference. So I've ranked East Anglia as my highest preference because East Anglia includes Cambridge and I really like Cambridge and it includes some of the smaller hospitals around Cambridge like Ipswich, Bedford, Peterborough, Kings Lynn. Those are the places that we've been as Cambridge students on our on our clinical placements. If you want to go for London, London is split up into three regions. Number one is Northwest London at the moment. Number two is North East Central uh, and number three is South Thames, which covers a broad area, including like Brighton and Kent and like a load of other places. So yeah, you rank your regions in order of preference and you get matched to a particular region based on your FPAS score, your foundation program application score, I think score um, and your score determines which region you end up in. Northwest London and Northeast Central London are two of the most competitive regions so you need a higher score to get into London. Uh, East Anglia is not particularly competitive, Scotland is not particularly competitive, there are other areas like Yorkshire and Trent and so on that are not that competitive so you need a lower FPAS score to get into those. Now once you've been matched to a particular region then at that point you have to rank order pretty much all of the various jobs in that region. Uh, so job number one might say uh, FY1, foundation year one, so rotation number one, A&E, rotation number two, general surgery, rotation number three, general medicine, FY2, rotation one, psychiatry, rotation two, obzingani, rotation three, pediatrics. So each job is pretty much a list of six rotations and the order in which they in which they come and the hospitals in which you'll be based. So for example, it might say that for job number one out of five, 500, uh, you're based in Addenbrooke's hospital for year one and Kings Lynn for year two. So you have to pretty much look at this list of 500 jobs or however many there are, there are usually loads, uh, and you rank them in order of preference. And then those jobs are allocated in order of, again, the, the, the foundation program score, the FPAS score uh, for, each, for each person in that dean. So for example, I've got a relatively high score relative to the rest of East Anglia. Um, therefore, I, it, it's, it's, it's nowhere near the highest score, so I'm unlikely to get my very first choice of jobs. But I think I'm probably pretty likely to get at least, you know, something in my top five, maybe my top 10. So each year, usually by around the first week of March, you find out which specific region you're going to end up in. And then you have about a month to rank order all the jobs. And then by about April time, you'll, you'll know which hospitals in particular you're going to be in and which rotations in particular you're going to be doing. So that's where we're at at the moment. We're in between March and April. Uh, so I know that I'm going to be assigned to the East Anglia Deanery, which was, which, which was my first choice because I love Cambridge. And I'm now in the process of ranking all the jobs so I can you know work out which ones I want. But yeah, hopefully that was a, a relatively understandable overview of how medical training in the UK works. I'm just going to say one thing about the academic foundation program because that is something that uh, I applied for but I didn't actually get and there's going to be more on this in my video coming up at some point about how to deal with rejection. So the academic foundation program runs alongside the foundation program. It's the AFP for short. And you know how I said in the foundation program you have these six rotations, one in FY1? Uh, sorry, three in FY1 and three in FY2. The academic program is pretty much the same. You do foundation year one, foundation year two, except usually one of your rotations, usually something in FY2, is a, like a, is a research block of some sort. So when you apply for the academic foundation program, you rank the sort of research you would like to do. Uh, and then you have an application form and you have an interview and kind of the scores from that decide which order preferences are allocated in. So I applied to the Essex Bedford Hertfordshire region for one of the academic programs there and I applied to London generally for one of the academic programs there because when you're applying for AFP the regions are slightly different so for example London is just all one big zone rather than three different deaneries. So my application was strong enough to get interviews at both places but then my scores at interview weren't high enough to get offered a place. I got put onto the reserve list which meant that they said on, in the feedback that you were appointable but other people scored higher than you so they were given their preferences first and then I wasn't given anything because I didn't rank highly enough at the interview. So that was a bit of a blow. I would have quite liked to do the academic foundation program, um, but hey, it is what it is. And now I'm instead, I'm just gonna do the normal foundation program in Cambridge. The academic foundation program is a good gateway drug to get you into some kind of research, some kind of academic career. There is this thing called the Academic Clinical Fellowship Program, which is beyond the scope of this video because most people watching this are going to be applying to medicine. Uh, and if you're worrying about like stuff like the Academic Clinical Fellowship Program, which comes like eight years down the line, then you know, I'll, I'll put a link in the description below, but it's it's not really worth worrying about at this point. But the idea is that if you want some kind of academic career, if you want to do research on the side, if you want to do teaching on the side as well, kind of lecture, lecturing for a university, it's useful to have some kind of academic stuff under your belt. So the Academic Foundation Program is the first way into that. It's not the only way into, the, in, into it. If I want to go down the academic uh, route, not having done an AFP will put me at a slight disadvantage, but it's by no means the end of the world. So I'm hoping that if I do decide to go down the academics route, I will at least have some research experience under my belt that I can get through the normal foundation program. I won't have a, a specific four month block in which to do research, but I'm hoping to get involved with projects and things. So I have absolutely no idea how long this video has been, but to summarize, you have six years of med school. And you usually have two years, well, you always have two years of the foundation program or the academic foundation program. After that, you make the choice and the choice is between core medical training, which is two years, or surgical training, which is two years, 
or a run-through specialty like GP or psychiatry or obzingani or whatever, which have their own own number of years. And usually after you've done your specialty training, you're a consultant. And that's usually about the age of 35, 36, if you've done everything on time, if you've not taken any time out. So that's pretty much how it works. I hope you found this video useful. And yeah, as I said, I'm currently matched to East Anglia and I'm in the process of ranking my jobs. And I'll do another video explaining uh, what happens uh, once I find out whether where, where I'm going to be for the next two years. Definitely going to continue vlogging, uh, definitely going to continue making videos, uh, hoping to go as well as videos for medical applicants, I want to go also into videos for medical students. Uh, so videos about OSCEs and videos about you know, other, other sorts of stuff. So we'll see. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Have a lovely day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.